Hi, namaste. My name is Henry Jolicoeur. I'm a French Canadian hypnotherapist that has worked with thousands of clients. And my special field of interest and study is brainwashing and mind control by cults. I am also a long time devotee of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. For more than 30 years, I consider Bhagavan to be my Ishta Guru, the spiritual master that my soul trusts completely. That is why I am so disturbed by the way Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi's teaching are now being misused by so-called Advaita teacher such as Moji, Gangaji, Ailey, Andrew Cohen and many others. And most of those teachers have for teacher the so-called Papaji that you see here. He has created disaster by claiming that dozens of people that came to study with him had attained enlightenment. Many of those teachers went back to the Western world and created business out of the teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. They give lectures with the pictures of Ramana Maharishi, the pictures of Papaji, claiming that they are representative of those teachings. I think the best testimonial that I have heard about the phony enlightenment that Papaji was claiming to give to people is from Mr. Sam Harris who was present at the time that Papaji was claiming that this one and that one had attained enlightenment. Just listen to his testimonial. Kundraji's influence on me was profound, especially because it came as a corrective to all the strenuous and unsatisfying efforts I'd been making in meditation up to that point. But the dangers inherent in his approach soon became obvious. The all-or-nothing quality of Pundraji's teaching obliged him to acknowledge the full enlightenment of any person who was grandiose or manic enough to claim it. Thus I repeatedly witnessed fellow students declare their complete and undying freedom, all the while appearing quite ordinary, or worse. In certain cases, these people had clearly had some sort of breakthrough, but Pundraji's insistence upon the finality of every legitimate insight led many of them to delude themselves about their spiritual attainments. Some left India and became gurus, from what I could tell, Punjaji gave everyone his blessing to spread his teachings in this way. He once suggested that I do it, and yet it was clear to me that I was not qualified to be anyone's guru. Nearly twenty years have passed, and I'm still not. Of course, from Punjaji's point of view, this is an illusion. And yet there simply is a difference between a person like myself, who is generally distracted by thought, and one who isn't and cannot be. I don't know where to place Punjaji on this continuum of wisdom. But he appeared to be a lot farther along than his students. Whether Punjaji was capable of seeing the difference between himself and other people, I do not know. But his insistence that no difference existed began to seem either dogmatic or delusional. On one occasion, events conspired to perfectly illuminate the flaw in Punjaji's teaching. A small group of experienced practitioners, among us several teachers of meditation, had organized a trip to India and Nepal to spend ten days with Punjaji in Lucknow, followed by ten days in Kathmandu, to receive teachings on the Tibetan Buddhist practice of Dzogchen. As it happened, during our time in Lucknow, a woman from Switzerland became, quote, enlightened in Punjaji's presence. For the better part of a week, she was celebrated as something akin to the next Buddha. Punjaji repeatedly put her forward as evidence of how fully the truth could be realized without making any effort at all in meditation. And we had the pleasure of seeing this woman sit beside Punjaji on a raised platform, expounding upon how blissful it now was in her corner of the universe. She was, in fact, radiantly happy and it was by no means clear that Punjaji had made a mistake in recognizing her. She would say things like, there is nothing but consciousness, and there is no difference between it and reality itself. Coming from such a nice, guileless person, 
there was little reason to doubt the profundity of her experience. When it came time for our group to leave India for Nepal, this woman asked if she could join us. Because she was such good company, we encouraged her to come along. A few of us were also curious to see how her realization would appear in another context. And so it came to pass that a woman whose enlightenment was just confirmed by one of the greatest living exponents of Advaita Vedanta was in the room when we received our first teachings from Tuku Urgen Rinpoche, who was generally thought to be one of the greatest living Dzogchen masters. Of all the Buddhist teachings, those of Dzogchen most closely resemble the teachings of Advaita. The two traditions seek to provoke the same insight into the non-duality of consciousness. But generally speaking, only Dzogchen makes it absolutely clear that one must practice this insight to the point of stability, and that one can only do so without succumbing to the dualistic striving that haunts most other paths. At a certain point in our discussions with Tuku Organ, our Swiss prodigy declared her boundless freedom in terms similar to those she had used to such great effect with Punjaji. After a few highly amusing exchanges, during which we watched Tuku Urgen struggle to understand what our translator was telling him, he gave a short laugh and looked the woman over with renewed interest. How long has it been since you were last lost in thought, he asked. I haven't had any thoughts for over a week, the woman replied. Tuku Urgen smiled. A week? Yes. No thoughts. No, my mind is completely still. It's just pure consciousness. That's very interesting. Okay. So this is what's going to happen now. We're all just going to sit here and wait for you to have your next thought. There's no hurry. We're all very patient people. We're just going to sit here and wait. Please tell us when you notice a thought arise in your mind. It is difficult to convey what a brilliant and subtle intervention this was. It may have been the most inspired moment of teaching I have ever witnessed. After a few moments, a look of doubt appeared on our friend's face. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. That could have been a thought there. Okay. Over the next 30 seconds, we watched this woman's enlightenment completely unravel. It became clear that she had been merely thinking about how expansive her experience of consciousness had become, how it was perfectly free of thought, immaculate, just like space, without noticing that she was thinking incessantly. She had been telling herself the story of her enlightenment, and she had been getting away with it because she happened to be an extraordinarily happy person, for whom everything was going very well for the time being. This was the danger of non-dual teachings of the sort that Punjaji was handing out to all comers. It was easy to delude oneself into thinking that one had achieved a permanent breakthrough, especially because he insisted that all breakthroughs must be permanent. What the Dzogchen teachings make clear, however, is that thinking about what is beyond thought is still thinking, and a glimpse of selflessness is generally only the beginning of a process that must reach fruition. Being able to stand perfectly free of the feeling of self is the start of one's spiritual journey, not its end. I think that the story is so funny. Here Papaji telling that poor lady that she was enlightened, and he did this in front of a room full of his followers that also believed that because Papaji said that she was enlightened, therefore she must be. This, for me, proved one thing, that Papaji was not enlightened at all. A true enlightened master would never say such thing, you are enlightened, you are enlightened. He was himself not truly enlightened. Sri Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi never said over a lifetime that any one of his followers were enlightened or had attained liberation, except his mother, and he did say that after she had passed on. And now we have those fake teacher that says, Papaji told me that I was enlightened. Papaji was a master manipulator, a master at brainwashing. Can you imagine possibly 50 and 100 people in a room completely believing that this one and that one is enlightened? That, ladies and gentlemen, is good brainwashing and possibly the worst disciple 
of Papaji is Mochi. I will put a link under this video to a video of Mochi receiving praises from his follower. It is quite disturbing, disgusting that this ex incense salesman, tea salesman, street artist from London just sit there accepting those praises and unable to say, listen, I'm just a regular guy and possibly the worst testimonial is this one from his now girlfriend, the so-called Krishna Bhai. Listen. I'm moving with you, living with you, and seeing you don't ask anything from us. But you give everything. You give us life. Mm. You bring us home. And of course, we want to express our love and gratitude for you. And when we're allowed to put our head at your feet, it's the highest joy. It's the highest blessing and privilege. Yes. 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 And I wish for that man to experience this too. Mm. And when we call Muji Baba Ki Jai, it means glory to Muji Baba, it means glory to truth, it means glory to our very own heart. And I wish for him to experience that too. Mm. It's such honor and blessing to sit here at your feet, at Baba Ji's and Ramana's feet. And it's like Baba Ji is so tangible in the room. And that's you. In, it's as though I want to tell him, like, Papaji, you can be so proud of your son. Like, he's the embodiment of you. He's just radiating love and light, compassion, joy, true spirit. And he's bringing us home into your heart. Mm -hmm. And that we're eternally grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending him to us. <laughs> My beloved Gurudev, <laughs> I offer these flowers of faith at your holy lotus feet. Whatever I have, you have given to me, and I dedicate it all to you. I have no love, nor do I know you. I don't even have the strength to worship you. But this mind of mine, this body of mine, every atom I dedicate to you. You're the only one in my heart and my thoughts. You're the one I call out to. Make, you, make me your instrument. All I am, I offer to you. It is unfortunate that this young woman eventually become the girlfriend of Mochi. In America, I have attended many seminar at the Spirit Rock Buddha Center in California, one of the most important in America. And they have now put in effect many rules and regulations for teacher that wants to have a relationship with their student. And many Buddhist organizations around the world have done the same. But there's no one stopping Moji or other fake Advaita teacher to take advantage of their female followers. If you want to know what enlightenment is all about, in the line of Ramana Maharishi, you must study the life of Bhagavan. When he arrived in Tiruvumangalai, he was only 16 years old. 
he was in such samadhi that when he went in the Patala Lingam, a cave-like samadhi of Saint Patala, he was completely absorbed in the divine so much that insect were eating up his body and he could not care less because he was totally absorbed in the divine. He was in samadhi. That is true enlightenment. And throughout his whole life, he demonstrated a state of purity, of loving kindness, where he never made any difference between you and me. I'm reminded of the story when Bhagavan was receiving many guests, coffee was served, but at one point coffee ran out. So he got coffee and many guests around him got coffee, but the people in the back got water and Bhagavan decided that from this moment on he would not drink coffee anymore because if that one and that one in the back did not get coffee, why should he get coffee? He was completely humble, established in divine oneness. So don't waste your time studying the videos of Mochi, Gangaji, and others. Bhagavan Sri Ramada Maharishi said clearly that he would be there forever for his devotees even after he left the body. And all the devotees at the Sri Bhagavan Sri Ramada Maharishi Ashram know that. And they are serving him 24-7 because they know that Bhagavan is present in their heart. Thank you very much. Namaste.